Physicists in this building are working to solve one of the deepest problems of fundamental physics and, in the process, cement themselves as the world center for neutrino physics. This is Fermilab, and these are their neighbors. Fermilab was founded in 1969 by Robert R. Wilson. The project was completed ahead, ahead of schedule and under budget, a rarity for a government project. To celebrate, Robert introduced five bison, along with 21 donated by the Illinois Department of Conservation. At the time, locals believed that the bison were introduced in order to warn the physicists of radiation before the citizens could find out. Fermilab disputed these claims on the grounds that bison cannot detect radiation. A quote from Fermilab's website reads, the oft-told tale that the buffalo are Fermilab's equivalent of a canary in the mine shaft, living Geiger counters to warn of radioactivity, is strictly fiction. The Fermilab site does not re represent a radiation hazard, and Fermilab buffalo do not glow in the dark. These bison are for sure a tourist attraction, but the scientists on the site are anything but zookeepers. When they're not working with their two-mile-long circular particle accelerator, some scientists are working on one of the biggest physics experiments in modern history. The multi-billion dollar DUNE project was designed to study investigation of neutrino oscillations to test CP violation in the lepton sector. This is a fancy way of saying that they are testing whether when you reverse time and change particles to antiparticles, you get the same result, just backwards. Determination of the ordering of the neutrino masses, which asks which neutrino is the lightest. Studies of supernova and the formation of neutron stars or black holes. Search for proton decay, which was never observed, but is predicted by theories that unify the fundamental forces of physics. Essentially, this device turns protons from a proton beam into cans and peons, which are focused through a magnetic horn to decay into neutrinos. These neutrinos are then shot 700 miles away to a lab in South Dakota, where they are detected by a device that looks like this. This is one of the coolest things about learning particle physics. You set up this whole complicated experiment that travels 700 miles and the end detector is essentially just a normal experimental setup determining the movement of electrons. We'll see later a super complicated experiment which is essentially measured using a calorimeter, the same thing you would use to measure a burger. Unfortunately, the project itself is $1 billion over budget and has had disappointing results. This is to be expected for one of the most ambitious and progressive projects in physics history, but the U.S. government is not in the business of funding dreamers and hopefuls. Seriously though, despite Dune's stuttered ambition, Fermilab still represents one of the most long-standing and beautiful scientific labs ever. They've managed to, to discover four new subatomic particles in the past 40 years, and it's pretty likely to help us discover much more in the future, like new uses for quantum computing, or what they're most excited about, discovering physics beyond the standard model. If they complete their research objective with new 2 e of converting an electron to a muon, they'll be able to conclusively identify physics beyond the standard model. We'll get back to Bison in a second, but the basic logic of the experiment here is simple. You use a proton beam to emit, to emit peons from a sheet, and those emitted peons will decay into muons. Here's the detector, and any electron that leaves the sheet without losing energy in a neutrino conversion will be analyzed further as a violation of the standard model of physics. This sounds complicated, but the end detector is essentially just reading if an electron has a certain amount of energy. In this case, 105 mega elect electron volts. This tells them that it didn't lose energy to turn into another type of matter. It's like physics one stuff, and they're using it in, yeah. Uh, so, back to the bison. Bison are currently an endangered species, and the ones on the site haven't been open to the public visit since the beginning of the COVID pandemic. In a way, they're a lot like the site itself. 
a symbol of ambition and resilience in the face of difficulties, doubts, and existential suspicion. Next time you start predicting the downfall of a company or a research project, or hell, even a relationship, remember to ask if you were just another guy in Illinois. Ask when the bison are going to start glowing in the dark.